Mom Taking in the Laundry Productions presents... Alright, let's see what we got in the magic bag here. Potentiometer, a couple of transistors, another couple of transistors. Actually, I just showed it up to the camera so you can see. Lots of relays. We need these. Some strip board. Oh, more switches. Some more potentiometers. Some LEDs. Another potentiometer. Another potentiometer. Oh, the, the other two transistors. Another couple of LEDs. And I think that's just about it. Stuff in here, but don't worry about that. It's just... Right, let's unpack this stuff. Okay, well here's everything I ordered today. Now I think the first thing to start with is making the power supply. That's what these transistors, these large transistors are for. Because I'm going to make two power supplies. Now, it's not because this is a stereo amplifier, but because this is going to use these relays for the um, actual switching, I'm going to need a very stable power supply for both the amplifier and the relay network because I don't want the relay solenoids to induce any hum so that's why it's going to need two power supplies okay well I now have the power supply partially done right now it just has the raw elements of any power supply it's a transformer here bridge rectifier there you can't really see it and a smoothing capacitor now I'm just going to plug this in and see what voltage it gives out Better turn the meter on as well. Okay, that's given out about 20 volts. It's a little higher than I would like, but I think that should be okay. Now I've just got to make the regulator. And I've forgotten whether the case on these transistors is the collector or the emitter, so I've got to look that up. So I'll be back shortly. Okay, now I've done a little more work on the power supply. I've soldered in the two transistors. I've only got one of them connected up right now because as you probably know this is going to have a dual power supply, one for the relays and one for the amplifier. So I've made one of the power supplies. Um, I've got it connected up to the meter. I'm just going to turn it on and uh, see what we get. coming out. Okay, I think I found the problem. There was a stubborn wire that was refusing to be soldered. I think that was causing all the problems. As you can see, it's um, there's a little bit of residual voltage in there. That's not connected 
to the mains right now, so I'm just going to plug it in and see what we get. Ah, the meter's jumped up. 11.53 volts, apparently. And still climbing very slowly. Seems to be stabilising now, at about 11.56 volts. That's pretty good. Transistor is not getting hot, so that's a good sign. Can't believe this, I've actually made something that works. Well, I'm very happy to say that this now has a fully working dual power supply. I have both transistors working. I mean, both transistors wired up. So both parts of the power supply are, are working absolutely fine. Obviously all this stuff has nothing to do with it, that's just loose components. But yes, I'm very pleased with myself, so the, the power supply is now finished. Next thing I'm going to do is wire up the relays and see where we go from there. This is the full schematic for the power supply. You can see it is fairly simple. Now it does look like a, a power supply for a split rail system, but it is in fact just two single rail power supplies with a central ground. Two positives and central ground. Don't know how well you can see the uh, values of the resistors and the capacitors. I can see it pretty well on my on my camera screen, and it doesn't have a very high resolution, so you should be able to see, make out what's going on there. The uh, transistors I used were the two N three O five fives, and uh, this here which is where I made a little mistake and drew something in that wasn't there, so that's why that's covered up. Anyway, I'll sign off now and um, see you next time. Until next time, goodbye.